Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heavenly Father, without you, there is nothing we can do. And Father, it's preaching time. And I realize, Father, that I need you more than ever before. And I pray that you would make with my mind. And I pray that the words that come out will be pleasing in your sight. And your children can be blessed and can be saved through your word. Have your way in this service today. In Jesus' perfect and pure name, we give you praise. And the church of God said, Amen. 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 Today is a good day. And I am happy to still be standing in the land of the living with as much stuff that's going on in the world. Every time you turn around, there's problems on one end, there's problems on another. But we know through it all, we're gonna get through it, we're gonna make it, because the word says, tells us that we are more than a conqueror, that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Now today is our first Sunday, which is communion. So I'm asking all of you that are out there that's listening and watching to, to get your, your articles together, get your elements together, that we will consecrate them at the time of our communion. Whether it be juice, water, milk, whatever type of liquid, and whatever type of cracker or bread that you want to use, we will consecrate that when time for us to take it, symbolizing the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. But those of you who are out there listening to us today, that's out there, uh, we will be coming from the book of Luke, Luke this morning. That'll be Luke, the 14th chapter. Luke, the 14th chapter, uh, beginning at the 16th verse. That's Luke, the 14th chapter, and we will read from that 14th chapter uh, of Luke, the 16th through the 23rd verses of that passage of Scripture. We are so thankful to be here today and thankful for God is doing it for us. And we are coming out of uh, the King James Version where it says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go uh, and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yokes of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house began, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in heaven, the poor, and the main, and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. And I want to read that verse again, because I want to draw a text from that verse. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out 
into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. And I want to use for a subject or a thought. You are welcome at the table. You are welcome at the table. You are welcome. Have you ever felt unwelcome? Have you ever been in a place where you felt like you was out of place or that the people didn't want you there? Many people have experienced this occasion over one time or another to feel unwelcome, unwanted. I heard a story was told of a young girl that was a salutatorian of her high school class of 2019 that graduated. And she was telling her audience, mainly it was drawn up of, a, I guess, mainly a dark black high school, and they were in awe from what this young lady was saying because she was an American Hispanic that came in 2012. And she said when she came to this, this country, when she came to this school, she felt a culture shock from the way she was treated because she wasn't treated fairly. She was looked upon, ostracized, and she felt unwelcome. But with her excellence, determination to make it, and she had her eyes on the prize, she was going to graduate. And so she kept pushing forward, even though they was looking at her unworthily and unwelcomely, but she didn't pay that any mind. She kept pushing with the things she had in front of her. And, 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 and when she graduated, she was, was terrible in how she was feeling, but she pushed through that. And many of the people were telling her, her classmates was telling her, why don't you go back to your native country? Because when she would begin a, a sentence, she would start it off in English, but she would end up speaking Spanish. And the students would tell her, you need to go back to your own country. If you're gonna be an American, learn to speak English and then we can understand you. But with her determination, she came in 2012, but 2019 she graduated as a salutatory of her high school. But she knows what it feels like to be unwelcome. Unwelcome is like a, a duck out of water. To feel unwelcome is like a black boyfriend being introduced to the grandparents of a white girlfriend. That's like uneasiness, almost like a duck out of water. It's sort of like your president, Donald Trump, how he felt when John McCain's family didn't invite him to the funeral. He, he, he felt the pressure of not being welcomed. And when you're not welcome, that's not a, a good feeling to feel. And many of us as black people, we've gone through those Jim Crow days of feeling un, unwelcome. We, we had to sit at the butt, back of the bus. We weren't welcome in the front of the bus. We had to sit at the back of the bus. And we weren't welcome at lunch counters. We had to leave and go back to the back window to order food. We, we didn't feel welcome. And we who are children of God, we've gone through that, so we know what that feels like. <clears throat> but I stopped by to tell you on my way to heaven that there is a table where all of us are welcome. No matter whether you're Hispanic, no matter whether you are Negro, Caucasian, black, white, green, purple, male, female, you are welcome. At this table, you're welcome. You are welcome at this table. Now, looking, looking at our text, 
what we see here where, where, where Jesus was talking about a host who had prepared a meal. And the meal was prepared that God was trying to demonstrate that he was trying to draw people into the ark of safety. And this, this host was prepared the meal and sent out invitation to all to come. But each one who he had sent out invitations to, they came back with excuses. They couldn't come for this reason enough. Couldn't come for that reason. And so Jesus, what he did, he, he kind of changed up the Old Testament strategies, how they would invite the VIP. But Jesus opened up this door, whosoever will, let it up. Because the Jews refused him. The Jews refused him. Because we can find that in, in John, the first chapter and the 11th verse. Where the first chapter and the 11th verse say he came unto his own. And his own received him not. But it went on to say to do as many as received him. To them he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Even those that believed on his name. In other words, God is opening up this door that all of us can come and sit at the table. You are welcome at this table. And I want you to know that when you come to this table, this table is, is a table that's prepared. This table may not have, a, I mean, you get more than collard greens. You get more than ham hocks. You get more than steaks, candy yam. But this table is a table of blessings that you can receive from God. Whether you know it or not, God wants to bless all of us. But we are not hiding up. We are not getting ready for his blessings. And God wants us to know that he wants to bless us. But it's like when you come to the table, when you come to the table at home, before you can come to that table, you have to go by the, the, the bathroom, the restroom, and kind of wash your hands and get yourself cleaned up. So it's the same when coming to the Lord's table. We have to get cleaned up. And what cleans us up is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit cleans us. With the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes us. And the Holy Spirit nudges us into repentance. So we can be restored to sit at the table of God's blessing. And see, he, he got blessings in store for us. And I want us to understand, if you want to get lined up with God's blessing, I want you to get washed up, get cleaned up, come to the table. And God will start blessing you. You will start seeing blessings that you hadn't seen before. He will open up doors in your face that are being closed. He will do that. And I want you to know, you see, when you come to the table and, and the Holy Spirit washes you with the blood of Christ and he, he nudges you to repent, ask the Lord to forgive you for my bad deeds, forgive me for my misconduct, forgive me for the things I've done wrong. And once you get washed up, you see, the Holy Spirit anoints you. And, 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 and then, and then as he anoints you, the power of God falls upon you and it illuminates you and it makes you ready to receive the blessings of God. And once you're ready to receive his blessing, it'll make you a worthy vessel. And I'm not trying to hurt nobody because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. None of us. All of us need the grace and love of God. But I want us to have enough understanding that we need to come to God for our repentance and let God open doors for us. 
Because I want you to know that in God's house, everybody is welcome. Now that you've learned how to prepare yourself for this table, everybody is welcome. There's no uh, big eyes and, and little U's in, in this, at this table. This table is designed for everybody. And God wants all of us to come and sit at this table. I can imagine Matthews probably felt like he was not worthy to be able to sit at this table. Because Matthews was a publican, and he was a tax collector. Even though he may not be been an evil, hateful man, but he was hated throughout the community. And the reason the people hated him, the Republicans, because they had a zeal for going after tax money with an increase on it. And they would go after the rich. The rich hated him. And then they would go after the poor. And the poor hated him because he was sucking the life blood out of them. But even at that table, after doing all that, Matthew knew he wouldn't be one that would be welcome at that table. But Jesus welcomed him at that table. All of us are welcome to come to the table. And I pray and hope that everybody that listened to me today will come to this table and, and, and get your blessing. I know many of us are looking and watching the TV for uh, to see what the country's going to do about extending unemployment. What you need to do, really what you need to do, you need to look to God for all your help so God can make all of this come true through Him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And everything else you need will be added. Do I have any witnesses out there? Do I have any faith believers out there? And this, this problem that's going on in the world today, the antidote is found in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter and the 14th verse. That's the antidote for it. If my people that are called by my name would just humble themselves and seek my faith, turn from their wicked way, and if the Bible says, then I will step in and heal them. So God wants to help us. So we're going to take his word just as he says and stand on his word. And I want you to know that when you stand on his word, give his word back to him when you're praying to God. Say, God, you say it. You say it in your word that you will do this and you will do that. So I'm standing on your word. And we learn in, in Bible study that, that the faith of a mustard seed will move mountains. Whatever amount of faith you got is enough faith to get what you need. And the good part about it was everybody was born that was born with a measure of faith. So you already got faith working in your faith. You do have a seat at the table. God will take care of you. All you gotta do is trust him. All you gotta do is depend on him because you are welcome at his table. God is so good to all of us. And he wants us to know that he is standing right by our side. Even in the midst of this pandemic that's going on, God got our back. And he wants you to know that he's there. And all you gotta do is, is call him. But I want to know that, let you know this. There's a another table. There's another table. There's a table of salvation that we have to realize. Finally, my brothers and my sisters, as I bring the word on in, I want you to know that there is a table of salvation. Every believer has a reserved seat at this table of salvation. Everyone that trusts in God have an invitation at this seat of salvation. And on the table of salvation, there is the wine. 
which represent the blood of Christ that was shared for us. This is on the table of salvation. And the table of salvation also, there's bread on that table. And this bread represents the provisions of God. Because God is the bread of life. He's on that table. That salvation table has the bread. And, and, and the table of salvation is different from the table that was given in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, there was a table that was given, but on that table was determined good from evil. But there was no salvation at that table. Just like it was in the table of, 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 of Isaac and his deceptive son Jacob. On that table, there was vixen, there was lies, but there was no salvation on that table. There was another table between the three Hebrew boys. On that table was good food from the king's table, but there was no salvation on that table. But I want you to know that on the table of salvation, is bread of heaven. It's the same bread that Jesus promised would satisfy our hunger. Since the table of salvation required bread, there was an old warrior, old songwriter, sung out this song, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I walk no more. Since that bread was on, on that table, as the table of salvation is the blood of Jesus. It is the same blood that Jesus would shed for the remission of sin. This is the blood that the old warrior sang out. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody believes that they have sinned so bad that they can't even get close to God. But I, I want you to know that God has already made a way for you. God has already opened up the door for you. God has already saved you. All you got to do is stretch out on your face. God loves you so, so much. And when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Because he sat at the door and knocked. He said, if any man hear me and let me in, I come in and sup with you. And there is somebody who believes the table of salvation is expensive. I can't afford it. But I want you to know that Jesus paid it off. It was expensive, but he paid it off. Because because he paid it all, because sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. He paid it all by picking up an old rugged cross. And I could see him in my mind as he was going up the hill, God off the hill and falling down, but, but looking and he had you and I on his heart and on his mind that he, he had to do it because he wants all of us to have the opportunity to be saved. And if you are here today, God wants you to know that he has made preparation for you to have a seat at the table. Everything is paid for. Come and let God bless you. Come and let God move you. Come and let God give you what you need. How many know that God allowed his angels to watch over us? That's why I say all day and all night, angels are watching over us. We as children of God, God got our back. In the book of Lamentation, the third chapter, the 22nd verse, it talks about new mercies that's given to us every morning. Not the same old mercy, but brand new mercies every day. God got our back. That's why it's so good to come to 
to this table and be washed by the blood of the Lamb. And I want you to know that when you come to the table, get washed. Let the Holy Spirit wash you, clean you up, and watch how your blessing will turn around in your favor. God wants to bless all of us. He don't want none of us to be lost. And all we got to do is just follow his guidelines. We walk by faith and not by sight. How many know that God got our back? I don't care what the world is pulling down to you. God got your back. I don't care how bad things may look. God got your back. I don't care what the, what's coming down in your house and around your family. God got your back. When you come to this table, God will open up doors. He'll make ways out of your way. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Mary's little baby. The bride and the morning star. I'm talking about the one that walked eight burnt arms to the door just to be baptized by John. I'm talking about Jesus, the bride and the morning star. I'm talking about the one that's all walking on water. Do you know him today? Have you tried it for yourself? How many know that that day is coming? All of us gonna have to stand before God. And if you are not ready, if you have not been saved, you have not stopped by this welcome table. You're gonna find yourself lost. Please, ma'am, please, sir, hear me today. Because this is very vital. We are living in a pandemic time and we don't know where death is, but God knows. But it's up to us to be ready. What we do know, that it is coming to all of us. Because in the book of Hebrews 9, 27 says, it is appointed unto man to die. So we need to be ready, get ourselves in order, Come to this table and give your life to Christ. Sit down with him. Talk with him. He'll make ways for you. He'll do the undone. Am I right about that? Do I have any true believers out there today? Do I have someone out there today that's thinking about turning their life around? Maybe you've been talking about doing the right thing. Or maybe you haven't had an opportunity to do it. And so God has blessed you today with this golden opportunity for you to give your life to Him. And if you're out there listening, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, this is the greatest thing you can do. And I want you to know that I haven't always been preaching the gospel. I know what it's like to be on the other side of the track. But I can tell you what I was running from was not worth it. Once I turned to God, I won't look back. And once you turn, you'll realize how good it is. It was found in Psalms, O taste and seek how good God is. He will take care of you, bless you. But if I have someone out here today that has not given their life to Christ, and you want to give your life to Christ, you want to be saved, because the world is coming to an end one day, and if you are lost in hell, you will live your life. If you out there and you want to be saved, let me lead you to Christ. And I want you to raise your hand and repeat after me. And I want you to believe in your heart. You can say, Jesus Christ, I am a sinner saved by grace. And I know you died for my sins. And I want to come to your welcome table. I want to come where I can be blessed. I want to come, God, because I know that you 
died for my sins, and I do believe that God raised you up from the dead. And I know that my belief turns into salvation just by me saying that and believing that in my heart, I am saved. And I'm saved to the day of redemption and turn my salvation into a crime. If you believe that, you are saved. And I ask that you would find you a Christian-based church. I would ask that you would sign up you would join this church and learn more of the Word of God. Learn more of what God wants you to do. Because God has blessed each and every one of us with a talent that He wants us to use working in this kingdom. And, and, and He wants us to get started. And once you get started working in the field that God wants you to work in, you will understand that the field he wants you to work in is far easier. And he makes ways for you to get through that field. And I'm asking you to come and do that now. And so after that, let us go to God in, in prayer. And we're going to thank God. Maybe there have been some that gave their life to Christ through this prayer that we just had. Maybe some came in. But let's go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, teach me how to pray and what things I ought to pray for. Father, right now I pray for St. John Missionary Baptist Church. I pray for those who have been in the hospital, Sister Maggie Smith. I pray for Sister Irene Shear, who has been in the hospital. I pray for the ones in the family who just lost their sister. And Father, really, I don't want to start calling names because I may miss somebody. But I pray right now, God, that you bless each and every bereaved family. Bless those that are going through. And I pray, God, that you bless churches all over this land and country that are being held in your name. And Father, not only that, I pray that you bless guests of the family. We are dealing with Tony's ice cream, confusion there. There's confusion around the courthouse to find you. Father, I pray that you would let your peace fall around these places, God, and give the leaders wisdom and knowledge in how to make the right decision, how to bless, how to open up doorways. And not only, God, in our local government, but I pray on the national level as well. Bless our president, Donald J. Trump, God, open up his understanding. Bless his staff. God, we know you are still in control. We're praying, God, that your will be done. Praying that we will be able to accept your will and accept the things that you have set before us. Teach us, Lord, how to number our days. Teach us how to be good servants over the things you have set before us. Teach us to be thankful over the little things and recognize your hands in love. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Also, also, I would like to make known to those who may have been listening and you may be saying within your heart or your spirit that you want to contribute uh, help this ministry here at St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. And I want you to know that you can come through PayPal and, and be able to send a donation of your choosing. Or you can do the old-fashioned way. You can mail it in to you can find the address on Facebook and find the address of the church and mail it in. And you can do whatever you need to do to send it in. Look at our webpage. It will show you the different um, apps that 
that we have as far as receiving funds and receiving money. And when you think about giving, just realize God loves a cheerful giver. And whenever you are giving toward God's ministry, and you give it to his ministry, he will always bless you where you can give more. I have learned that it's a blessing in giving. If you want to be able to receive, learn how to give. And God will open up these doors for you. But keep yourself in prayer. And keep all other churches in prayer that's going through this pandemic. And I pray that other churches see in their internet, in their Facebook, YouTube, online streaming. And I thank God for the online streaming. What may seem to be bad, God can turn it around and make a blessing out of it. Even though there's nobody, not a lot of people in the pew, the church, but he's putting it on blast out across this whole United States and all around that people can gravitate to the word of God. And we're going to thank him for that. But today is the first Sunday, and it's the day of our, we have our communion, and we thank God for giving us this great opportunity to break bread with him, and we know that he loves us, and we know that he's made way for us out of no way. And I want us to gravitate to your elements that you're going to use this morning as far as recognizing Jesus Christ. And like I said, if you don't have any wine, and you don't have any juice, whatever you have liquid to drink, uh, we can consecrate it for the word of God. Because God is able to do above and beyond anything we can think or imagine. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious Lord, as we partake of your supper, Father, I pray that these elements that we are about to take, we will take them in the light manner in which they were given. And I pray, God, that you would receive these gifts, you receive these, and bless it. Those who may not have wine, may not have water, may not have milk, have soda, whatever they have, bless it and consecrate it as being the blood of our Lord and Savior and the bread of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What Jesus did, he sent two of his disciples into the city. And he said, if you see a man with a pitcher of water, find out who the guest room is. And the man led them to an upper room. And he said, come on in. And they came in and he broke bread. And he blessed them. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take and eat. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he said, This is my blood of the New Testament, which was shared for many for the remission of sins. And as often as you partake of this, take it in remembrance of me. You may drink. After the drinking, 